Hey, David Ravhoff here. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, I thought I'd go through and just do an update on my React Redux TypeScript project. Um, I haven't really done anything with it for a while, and it's one of my more popular videos, and there's a few things I've been wanting to do with it. So um, I thought it'd be fun to go through um, a different way of dealing with uh, asynchronous behavior and side effects. Um, so by default, uh, Redux is set up just to you know work with kind of synchronous actions. Um, and there's a bunch of different ways that you can handle asynchronous side effects. So, you know, if you imagine you're working with um, any kind of like API calls or um, anything like that, you're going to have um, asynchronous behavior that you need to take into account in your application. Uh, and the way I'd handle that previously was with a library called Thunk. Um, but it had some downsides that um, you have to, you know, deal with callbacks for different situations. Um, and your action creators can get kind of complex and long um, and just generally like testing. I found testing to be um, not, I wouldn't say difficult, but um, it wasn't, um, it also wasn't like very simple. So uh, I was kind of playing around with uh, sagas, Redux sagas, because that's kind of become a popular or a popular alternative for how to deal with uh, asynchronous behavior. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's like the new standard or anything. It's just kind of a different way of handling it. Um, so uh, I figured I'd go ahead and just give that a shot and see what it looked like. And it was a very strange journey. Um, I was able to convert my project over to use Sagas pretty quickly. Um, the, the conversion was pretty straightforward. And uh, I was able to more or less use um, very similar tests. But the more I started looking into it, the more I started realizing I was not getting the benefit out of sagas that you're supposed to get out of them. Um, and so I'd actually recorded a video earlier talking about everything that I did. And I kind of paused and realized, um, you know, the video is kind of pointless because I wasn't uh, showing off what you can do with sagas. So um, I'm going to show you that in this video here. And uh, you can see here, um, if, you, if you've missed the previous video, I just have a simple React um, Redux TypeScript application here and it just makes some calls out to a Star Wars API and uh, if we just refresh it here we're gonna get a list of characters and we can click on these characters and get some more details and then if we wanted to we could uh, search here and get additional characters you know or get characters uh, for the search term that we put in uh, so this is the application um, it's all open source I'll include a link to it in the description below but um, kind of what I realized when I started digging into how sagas work is um, they're just like a totally different mechanism. So, you know, I'm familiar with working with promises, I'm familiar working with like async await, but sagas actually use something called generators, which are uh, relatively new. I mean, I think they've been around for a while, but they're kind of new to me. Um, and they're, at first glance, um, it seems kind of clear how they work, but they probably don't work the way you think they do. So <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go through uh, some example code and maybe um, kind of try to give you a, a rough idea of, of what they do and how they work. But I'm I'm gonna link in a couple articles below uh, that have really good clear walkthroughs that I recommend reading. And uh, one of them I kind of had to reread a few times. And even the author of it said, you know, for him uh, him or her I can't remember. Um, they, you know, they actually had to go through it a bunch of times too before it really kind of clicked. So, um, yeah, this may be a little bit crazy, but, uh, I'll try to give you just like a rough overview of how generators work. So, um, the benefits kind of make sense. Um, so let me hop over to, uh, the code here for a bit. Um, sorry, just going through some windows here. So, kind of right off the bat, um, the one thing that I needed to do was to, to bring in uh, Redux Saga. So here on my store, I'm bringing in Redux Saga. And then um, down below, you have to uh, instantiate the Saga middleware. And then uh, when you create your store, you need to apply that middleware. So um, previously I was using Thunk and I essentially just swapped out the Thunk middleware here with the Saga middleware. So that part was like pretty straightforward. And then um, down here, you have to tell the middleware to run what's called a saga. 
um, and I'll show you that here in a bit. Uh, and that's where this is going to start. You're going to start seeing some of the, the maybe something new you hadn't seen before with um, generators. So uh, essentially what the middleware is trying to do is it's trying to watch for any actions that come through. And if those actions are relevant, then it will try to run uh, one of these uh, generator functions. And if we hop over here, this is my um, Sagas file. Um, and right now I'm only dealing with one entity, so I'm just, it's just called character at the moment. Um, and uh, I, I guess the initial part that's interesting is this was uh, the function, um, the generator function that's referenced here, character saga. And um, it does this thing with yield and then uh, has uh, yields all and takes an array and then within that array, um, you, I, I'm using take every. There's there's an option you can use take latest if you want, um, but I'm using take every for um, this um, action. And then it's when it gets that action, it's calling um, this other generator function, which is up above or generator, I guess. Um, and that's this function here. Or this generator here and um, so essentially you know this is just kind of mapping the actions as they come in so you know like what you want to have done uh, or what you want to run uh, when one of those comes in and just kind of at first glance you'll see this is doing uh, kind of like a try catch setup which is kind of interesting it's not structured um, like a promise would be structured or like an async await and you'll also notice it's got these yield uh, statements throughout. And um, what's kind of interesting here is, uh, or I should say the yield keyword here. Um, so this, this is where it kind of gets into how generators work. So um, what generators will do is they'll run until they hit a yield uh, and then they'll just stop and they'll return um, an object that has a value and whether or not it's done, uh, whether or not the generator is like fully done or not. Um, and it's just two, it's just a object that's value and then whatever the value is and done and then true or false. And you'll get that back every time um, you run a generator. And it's gonna initially return whatever this evaluates to or whatever, whatever you pass into it here is what it's gonna return. It's gonna evaluate that and return it. Um, and you can essentially just keep calling next and it'll, it'll just go to wherever the next yield is and then do the same thing. So if we, if this had stopped and then we called character saga dot next, um, it would just go until it hit the next yield. And again, it would just, um, return, sorry, it would, uh, you know, return the, uh, value of whatever, uh, you gave it here. And, uh, so it's kind of interesting. You can control, um, you can control like how far it goes and have it stop and then wait for you to tell it to, to keep moving along. Um, but as far as sagas go, it basically lets you write your, um, code in kind of like a, a normal, a more straightforward way where you, you know, just doing a, a normal try catch. And if there's an error, you can just tell it whatever it is you want to do and kind of behind the scenes sagas are just taking care of, um, making sure this gets stepped through as you would want it to get stepped through. So <laughs> if I put this side by side with using, um, like actually um, using the thunks that I was using previously, it's not super different. Like the code's pretty close. I mean, other than um, these yield statements and, um, uh, but where it gets really interesting is when you start looking at testing. So initially when I was doing testing uh, with thunks, um, my test, were really kind of more like full-blown integration tests. Um, and I've actually held on to a couple of them just to have uh, have that kind of integration testing. But if you go look at testing for thunks, you'll see a lot of the times you'll have um, um, a setup that's similar to this. Uh, this one's using sagas, but the setups um, I have in this type of test is pretty similar. So you would like mock out um, you know, a way to make requests, um, or a way to, um, you would set up something so you could mock your request essentially. 
um, which is what I'm doing in this test. I'm starting off by saying, by just mocking out requests basically and what the responses would be. And then holding on to a list of actions I'm expecting to receive and then setting up the initial state of the store and then, you know, wiring all that together. And then um, it, it was slightly different when dealing with thunks, but um, more or less the same. Uh, you basically like listen for things to happen on the store. Uh, and when they do, um, you just, you know, basically look at the values coming out of that and then compare them to what you're expecting and see if you get the same actions coming in through the store is uh, what you're expecting. And if you do, you're good and everything works, but you're kind of hitting, um, uh, yeah, you're hitting like a lot of the application when you do that, like you're exercising um, action creators and actions and um, reducers and the store and um, uh, thunks are kind of part of the action creators so you're hitting that stuff um and that's cool it's good to do that like it's good to make sure that all the pieces of the application fit together and are working and that's one of the reasons i've kind of um decided just to hold on to a couple of those tests here but what's interesting is when you look at the test for sagas they're really straightforward um so here i'm just looking at uh actually i'll pull the code up on the left again so if I wanted to test this um, get characters uh, generator here, um, it's it's pretty straightforward to do. So over here on the right, what I do is I just say, hey, um, you know, give me a generator for uh, get character saga. So it just calls that and that sets up the generator, and then um, I can set up a uh, a mock response here, and then what I can do is I can just, because it's a generator and it has this ability to run up to a certain point, stop, evaluate something, return some values, and then you can choose to run it again if you want to and just kind of like step through and control how, um, how it progresses. The, the tests become really straightforward. So um, here I'm just saying, you know, uh, expect the generator.next returned value um, to be call um, get characters from API. And if we hop over here, I'm gonna try and get these side by side. This may not be enough space. Um, <clears throat> so like I mentioned earlier, it's gonna return an object that has a value and whether it's done or not. And the value is gonna be whatever um, the expression is that you give it. So here you can see that's why um, these things are equal. And then I can basically just say, you know, continue on. So I can say generator.next. And then again, I'll just look at the value that comes back out of that and um, figure out, you know, if that's what I was expecting or not. Now, what's kind of interesting here and what makes, um, uh, why I suggest going and reading up on generators a bit is um, you can substitute uh, the value for the overall yield expression if you want to <laughs> by passing in your own value here. So uh, even though this is on the left has already evaluated and returned and you know, we've inspected that value, um, when I call next with uh, my own value passed in, what it's gonna do is it's gonna um, replace the entire value of the yield, uh, that previous yield, uh, and it's going to um, just continue forward with that value. So that's why I'm able to pass in my own custom response here. And it's just gonna assign that value here to response, and then it's gonna just continue on. So um, by doing this, I can actually, you know, send in the exact response that I want. Um, and then it's just gonna keep running. So here it can pull characters off of that response because over here I have data results and then some uh, mock uh, character data here. And then again, it's gonna hit a yield and it's gonna return that value done object, the object with the value and done uh, properties. So um, that's the next thing that we can check here. So um, in this test here, I'm just checking to see that that is in fact uh, what it got, or what it's returning for the value. And then for this next run through, I don't need to set any special values for it. I just wanted to keep going. So in this case, I'm just gonna say, hey, um, generator.next, so you know, just move along to whatever your next thing is, 
And um, because there's really nothing left for it to do and the value um, coming out of this isn't gonna cause any problems, not gonna raise any errors. Um, it's just gonna get back, uh, it's gonna return uh, done true and value undefined and that's what you get from a generator when it has nothing left to do. Um, and if you ever want to force a generator to just return done true in a value, you can just do a return instead of yield and it'll do that. And um, yeah, I guess the value is undefined when there's nothing left to do, which kind of makes sense. So, uh, you know, it's really cool because it makes these tests really straightforward. You have a lot of control over um, um, like where you want to stop and test and check a value and if you need to substitute values it's really easy to do it uh so um yeah it just makes just makes working with um testing these um things that can traditionally be kind of annoying to test uh pretty straightforward and um i'll just go through the failure case here too so you can kind of see what that looks like so in the failure case um i'm setting it up in a very similar way uh, so I'm just gonna get the generator again here I'm setting up just kind of a dummy response that um, won't work and then doing the same thing I'm calling a generator dot next expecting it to hit the API then I'm just why I'm just you know passing through my bad dummy response here or mock response and uh, it's gonna gonna call generator dot next with that and then check the value and because that's gonna cause things to blow up um, I'm making sure that I'm hitting the failure case down here uh, and then um, just checking that it when I call next on it one more time that there's nothing left to do and it's done um, and so yeah I mean it just makes it pretty straightforward for testing how this works um, testing uh, you know dealing with um, API's and asynchronous behavior that can normally be kind of a pain to test um, so you know I've only done a handful of tests this way um, I have seen a lot of people say when they've switched to this method that they feel like it's really cut down on like a lot of uh, boilerplate um, testing and and having to test um, kind of you know breaking away from doing unit testing and having to t uh, touch on and test like related things that it touches. So uh, because they're you know kind of pure functions, you can just just really focus in and test the generators themselves, make sure that they're behaving as expected. Um, I still do think it's a good idea, though, to have some, you know, um, wider kind of integration tests that do kind of check that your overall app's behaving the way you expect when you um, send out those, when you dispatch, um, you know, events to your store and, and just kind of step through and make sure everything's behaving as expected. But, yeah, I found this uh, to be kind of an interesting little um, rabbit hole that I went down today looking into this. Uh, like I said, I'll put links in the... Um, description of the video that link both to um, an article describing about how uh, generators work and going through some really interesting examples of how they work and then um, there's also a really good uh, article on writing tests using sagas that kind of explains um, uh, what I went through here but uh, they go through the, the cases that they go through a little bit some are a little bit simpler um, but it was really helpful for me to see that so I'll include that um, but yeah, if uh, you know you're interested in seeing more videos like this, hit subscribe, uh, hit the little notification bell to uh, be notified when uh, more videos come out. Uh, if you liked it, hit the like button; it really helps out the channel. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next one.